Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is John Hammond, and in this video, I wanted to talk about my OSCP experience, or the Offensive Security Certified Professional Exam. So, I know there are already a ton of these videos and blogs and articles out on the internet already. It's kind of like an obligatory thing you have to do after you take the OSCP exam. So, uh, this is my take. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Um, first, I need to give kind of a disclaimer. Um, this video is not intended to come across with any, I don't know, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to come across like some pretentious, arrogant, jerk guy. Uh, I did not expect for the exam to go the way that it did. So I had got 30 days of lab access, which is that preliminary, okay, you have the time to prep and prepare the PWK course before you take the OSCP exam, and I got 30 days, so I would have time to practice. I was busy during the first month. I got it in August. Uh, the exam time, oh, I'm sorry, my lab time was going to end on September 10th, and I was at DerbyCon while that was going to happen, so I ended up getting 15 days more so I could keep cramming, because uh, I made it my goal to make sure that I would complete the lab report. You know, that's an optional thing, like you don't have to do it, it'll give you uh, five extra points or five bonus points if you need it on the exam, but you need to break into ten of the lab machines at least and complete all of the exercises, and there are so many exercises. It took forever. <laughs> I spent way too much time on that, um, but I made sure that I got it because I wanted to ensure that no matter what happened, if maybe I was just at the brink, at the cusp of passing, and I needed, oh, five points, and that would have been it, I would have been smooth sailing, I didn't want to let myself be kicking myself later if I wasn't going to pass just by five points, so I made sure that I got that done, I wanted to put in as much padding as possible, and my report for the lab report was 240 pages, it was huge, uh, I took a lot of screenshots, that's something that I swear by, take as much screenshots as you can, and I ended up using a kind of markdown to PDF converter, which was super nice, so I just didn't have to leave Sublime Text, which is where I was already taking notes, and it was just easy, quick, take a screenshot, copy it into my home directory, move it into the directory I need, and then here's a quick link for that screenshot on markdown. It was awesome, and that's what I would recommend to you if you hate dealing with Microsoft Word and OpenOffice and all that crap, so... So I ended up extending that lab access for 15 days so I could get the lab report done. Um, and I scheduled to take my exam on September 22nd, which would have been this Sunday. So I got my results back this Wednesday, which was today. I got them in the morning. Um, but I was taking the exam. It was a, it was a Sunday morning. Uh, I spent <laughs> the, the weekend knowing that, hey, I'm going to have to go into work after probably staying up for an all-nighter, 24 hours to take the exam, uh, and I would have to go to work and function like a regular human being, and I was just going to be a zombie. Um, so Saturday, I didn't actually spend a whole lot of time prepping or worrying about the exam. Uh, I spent some time with my girlfriend. We went to see a comedy show, and I don't know. It was just get OSCP out of my mind. I didn't, I didn't want to be concerned with it at the time. Um, when I came to Sunday, I came to start the exam. It was exam day. Uh, my test started at 7 in the morning, and... I got up at 6, I took a shower, I made some eggs for breakfast so I could like, hey, clear my mind, get things ready, and I, my computer was acting up, uh, I turned it on, and it was booting with like RAID only, and I have a Dell XPS, so like it won't, boot, it won't boot Ubuntu, and I was like, what the crap, oh my gosh, this is the most annoying thing, I cannot have this when my OSCP exam is about to start, and I just needed to go into the BIOS and switch to AHCI, it's just stupid and frustrating and scared me, and I was already nervous, and whatever. I needed to clear my mind, I got ready, 7 a.m., it started, and we were off to the races. So I started with the buffer overflow machine, and I would be running scans for the other machines in the background while I was doing that. It took me about an hour to get the buffer overflow machine done, and uh, my tips for you, uh, what I would recommend when you're doing the buffer overflow is that you're very likely going to be documenting all the stuff that you do, and you're setting it up so that offensive security will be able to replicate your steps. Like The whole point of the report is that so another penetration tester can follow through with what you did, and it all makes sense, and they can, they can replicate it. So what I would recommend is... When you're setting up your callback or whatever you need to do to get shell access on the machine, don't have the machine call back to you, but 
set up your payload and shellcode so that you can go back to it. Uh, so that way, there's no need for them to regenerate shellcode, and there's no need to them to try and uh, create their R host and R port, and there's maybe they'll type that in wrong, or because they regenerated shellcode with ever encoding, it, it, it maybe includes some of the bad characters that you forgot or you missed. So what I would recommend is just make a one way so that you can call back to it, not it call back to you. And that way you can just say, look, use this script, use this shellcode, and it'll work. And, and that's what you need to do. Once I was done with the buffer overflow machine, I already had my scans and some enumeration done for the other machines. And, uh, you know, they say enumeration is the key. Enumeration, enumeration, enumeration. It's like the most, like I hear people say that's the frustrating thing to hear back as an answer when you're trying to ask for help. Or it's like, oh, try harder. Uh, and that annoys people. But I have to agree. <laughs> you know, enumeration is what's going to give you potentially those avenues, those routes to go down, those roads to look at, that maybe you'll find your initial foothold in compromise. Um, I took a lot of breaks. Like, I would get up, I'd get off of the keyboard, I would just say, hey, I gotta go take a break, and 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I would take a break every hour, at least. Uh, maybe if I was in the zone, I was working on something, I took a break at the, after two hours, and then I uh, would get back at it. I just kind of clear my head, pace around the house, I literally do that so many times, uh, review what I had, because I was like, okay, I got low privilege access here, I've got another thing here, and maybe I still need to figure out what I need to do on that machine, and it was, I was all over the place, I was taking notes in Sublime Text, I had my enumeration set, but I needed to take breaks, and I want to reiterate that to you, take breaks, do not just power through 24 hours of an exam when you're hurting, right, it's, it's a stressful thing. So, my tweak on the try harder answer that people will give to you is take a break and try again. Don't try harder. I know that's the frustrating thing to hear. It's like you're already trying hard enough. You're already trying. You're, you wouldn't be doing this if you weren't trying. But try your process again. Like Go back. Go take a look at that. those scan results. Go poke those ports one more time, even the ones that you didn't think that might mean anything because they're there purposefully. They're there for a reason. Like, uh, I would eventually, and this happened, I looked at a, por a protocol and a port, and I was like, I didn't even know I could enumerate this thing. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, these are the pieces of the puzzle. This is why this is why this is here, and this makes sense. Now I can use this to leverage and stage some of thing, and I would be able to get onto that machine. I did not use Metasploit. I didn't use Metasploit at all. I used MSF Venom, right, to craft our payloads and get our shellcode, but I had no need to use Metasploit because the process was look through our scripts, look through, okay, our scan results, look through uh, everything that we enumerated, and then do our research, look if there's any known exploits, and there always are. That's the idea of this, is being able to track down the exploit see the vulnerability, know how to adapt and adjust and, and, and tweak that exploit. Another benefit of having that lab report is that a lot of your work is already done. So if there's something like, hey, I know how to do this, I know I know what I'm up against, I know what syntax I need, I just I, I can just control F real quickly in my lab report and bang it out and there it is. Um, having those as your notes and some of already documentation is an awesome thing. That's, again, do the lab report. I really recommend that. So my exam started at 7 in the morning, and by noon, I knew with my lab report that I had more than 70 points to pass. That was five hours. Uh, I told myself, hey, I'm not going to rely on these five points. That's a risk. That's a gamble. I, I want to go for more. I want to keep, keep beating stuff up. So I kept working to get more access. Uh, enumerating things to try and figure out, hey, what privesc do I need to do? How can I actually get a shell on this one last box, whatever the case may be? And by 3, 3 p.m., I compromised everything. I had full access on all five of the machines and had all the pictures, the screenshots of proof.txt, and I was like, that's it. Uh, I'm going to start writing my report now. And it's already in Markdown, everything that I've already been doing in Sublime Text, so quick and easy, I spent the next six hours of that time that I had, and I, and I spent eight hours to take, go through the boxes to take the exam. Um, then I went to do my report and 
I was done by 9 p.m. I was really ecstatic and pleased and just happy that, like, hey, I, I was able to put all these puzzle pieces together because that was it. That was finding, just tracking things down and looking for things. And what I can suggest to you is to practice and play and try and don't give up. Yeah, the try harder manifesto is there and sometimes it's it's painful to hear uh but it's not it's not strictly try harder it's it's keep trying and take a step back and look through your results from what lynn enum lynn priv checker uh sherlock and jaws and watson and all those other things um if you keep mulling through that and droning through that you'll find what it is that you're looking for um a lot of times I was in the labs, and I, it's easy in the lab environment with the machines to just, okay, drop Metasploit here, get on the machine, and run my enumeration scripts. Like, oh, cool, I can do a little, like, kernel exploit. And it's quick and easy, and it was good in some of those cases. But when it came to do the real thing, you're not going to have as much luck with some of those kernel techniques. So the bare-bones stuff that you need to do, enumeration... Check processes, check services, check ports that are open, check any version numbers with that software. Look online if there's stuff for that already. And that's everything that will get you what you need. So those are my tips. Those are my, that's, that's my experience. It, it was a success. I was really, really pleased and happy with it. Um, and honestly, a thing that I kind of want to suggest is it, to you is if you don't have whatever support is not, I I hate saying, Oh yeah, have a support thing. But, uh, obviously I live with three guys, other hackers and, uh, I'm engaged in the community between you guys and the discord server and all of you that watch my videos and other, I don't know, in the InfoSec community, it's easy to be with great people. And they say, Hey, Oh, Hey dude, you're taking your OCP. Like you got this, man. It's too easy. You're going to crush that thing. Sometimes that's what you need. That encouragement, that goes a long way. So as much as a great success as this was for me, I am thankful for all of you guys and for those of you that kind of keep track of, hey, what I'm up to, the things that I like to do. So thank you. You know, I, I can't say it enough. I realize that uh, this video is not particularly all-encompassing, um, and I know you guys might have some of your own questions that I am more than happy to answer. Uh, I think what I might like to do is do a little... Uh, stream or ask me anything where we just kind of talk about some of the stuff you guys have more specific questions that I haven't particularly addressed like oh, what do you do when you get stuck in a rabbit hole it's like go take a step back and I think I, I swear by that and some of those tricks for your buffer overflow and your enumeration and what you're really staring at just don't don't stop keep going take a break clear your mind and then try it again hey thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this I'm really excited about this. I'm really pleased. I hope you are too. You got to go take your OSCP if you haven't already got it. What's next, right? I want to go churn out OSCE and then OSEE and uh, next steps in uh, professional development. So thank you guys. I hope to see you in the next video. Hope to see you on the Discord server and we'll keep chatting. Love you.